the local, the mayor, the county executive, all the people gathered here as part of Team Baltimore and Team Maryland. And the federal government is with them as a partner. The Coast Guard, as we speak, is also part of this mission. Coast Guard cutters, Coast Guard aviation assets. I spoke uh, twice today uh, with Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg has pledged that they will do everything they can to very quickly release emergency response funds for this important project. The National Highway Transportation Administration Administrator is on his way to Baltimore if he's not here already. They will be releasing those early funds once all, all the parties are fully engaged. Second, the National Transportation Safety Board. I talked to the chair this morning. Uh, she and her team will be of what happened. And finally, the Army Corps of Engineers, naval assets uh, for uh, looking uh, below the surface uh, and clearing. All of this is going to be part of the effort. Uh, the governor uh, is leading Team Maryland. The mayor and the county executive, of course, Team Baltimore. Uh, but I'm just here to say, together with Ben Carton, Senator Carton, um, and Congressman Fumé and others, the federal government is your partner in this effort. Thank you, and again, to the people of our state and the people of this great city. We're with you. We love with you. We will get through this together. Thank you. Going again, of Paul Wiedemann, Secretary of Transportation. Just a few updates uh, since our meeting this morning. Um, the uh, the crew that was out there working was basically preparing potholes. Just so you understand, that had nothing to do with a structural issue at all in the, in the facility. Um, at this time, one person has been uh, rescued, and so far, and <coughs> our continue our efforts continue in terms of that. Um, engineers are on site right now determining both some of the structural issues, obviously some of the debris field, and we'll start to work that, but we'll work hand in hand with the NTSB before we take any further action in that area. With that, I did want to introduce the FBI for a few comments as well. Hello, my name is Bill Del Bagno. I'm the special agent in charge of the Baltimore Field Office. First and foremost, I want to say that our hearts go out to everyone that is impacted by this tragedy, especially the victims and their families. On behalf of the FBI, I would like to say that we are with you, we are with Baltimore, and we are with the partners every step of the way. The FBI, on very first, looking at and assessing this matter from an investigative standpoint, I want to be clear that there is no specific or credible information to suggest that there are ties to terrorism in this incident. The FBI has been part of this response from the beginning. We uh, came within one hour to the command post and quickly lashed up with our very strong partners all along the way. We will bring whatever resources that the FBI has to bear. We've already brought our crisis response, our victim services, and just recently our underwater search evidence recovery teams are on site. And we will continue to provide all those resources as long as it takes. And as the investigation goes on, we will take it to its logical conclusion along with our partners. To the people of Baltimore, to the public, I ask you to be patient as we go through this and as information becomes available to us. And lastly, I want to say thank you. Thank you to our partners. Thank you to everyone who uh, in the FBI and counts on the FBI. We will always bring what we need to the people of Baltimore, and we are with you. I would next like to introduce the Coast Guard. Good morning. The Coast Guard is still actively searching at this time. We are using response boat crews from two of our local Coast Guard stations, one of our Hilo crews from an air station in Atlantic City, and also one of our cutter crews on one of our 87-foot patrol boats. 
We will continue to work with our local, state, and federal partners during this tragedy. Thank you. We'll take some Governor, we'll take Governor, some questions. As far as you are aware, was the collapse of that bridge inevitable as that ship hit that part of the bridge? No, I mean, we're, we're still in the process of investigating exactly what happened, uh, so we, we don't have any further details uh, about whether or not it was inevitable or not. But no structural issue with the bridge? No, there were, well, in fact, the bridge was actually fully up to code, so we have no further information about uh, what, was the, what, what happened or not. Can you give Governor, us all shipping, no, 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 all shipping in and out of the port for. now stopped completely, and do you have any estimate very early on as to how long it will be before shipping can resume to the port of Baltimore? Yeah, we, we don't have uh, we don't have any estimates on timeline because right now our exclusive focus is on saving lives. Does our exclusive mean, focus is on search and rescue. Everyone, 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 could, 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 could you give us a better right sense now. for the number? Because we had heard, I know Mr. Wiedefeld said one had been rescued, but earlier from Baltimore we heard that two had been rescued. Can you tell us the total numbers we're talking about that may be that you're searching for and how many have been rescued? Well. We, there are eight individuals, uh, six are being uh, searched for right now. One is in, uh, taken to the hospital, and one is uh, not in the hospital that we're speaking to. So six unaccounted for? Yes. And does that involve the individuals that may have been in vehicles that went in the water? Or is that just the construction? We know. We believe it's the construction. What about? Okay, so we don't think there's anyone in, in vehicles in the water? No, we do not believe so. Okay, we'll take questions right here. Take this question here. Governor, two questions. Quick, how quickly did you find out about what happened here, and what was your reaction when you heard the scale of what just occurred at that bridge earlier today? Well, I mean, I, it was, uh, I think it was probably within minutes of, of, of everything, less than an hour, when I know that my phone first rang. Uh, and, you know, first from the, the mayor of Baltimore and also from our chief of staff. Um, and it was... Uh, we know the key bridge. I've written over the key bridge countless times. So many of us know the key bridge because it is our normal commute. This is a place that is a normal commute route for over 30,000 Marylanders every single day. And so to hear the words that the key bridge has collapsed, it's shocking um, and heartbreaking. And immediately our, the first thought and the first ideas go back to what happened to the people? Where are we? What was the impact on on, on, on human life? Um, but for every single one of us who were Marylanders, the words that the key bridge is gone, it it still shakes us because for over for 47 years, that's all we've known. And so this is a uh, this is this is uh, not just not just unprecedented from what we're seeing, what we're looking at today. Um, it's heartbreaking. Governor, can you confirm that the crew on the ship uh, alerted authorities that it lost propulsion and was in trouble? Uh, we, we can we can confirm that uh, that the, the crew uh, notified uh, notified authorities of, uh, of a power issue, yes. and that they had lost power on the ship. Is there any ability to shut down the bridge? Or is that going to take the question right there? Sorry, can you please uh, give me the numbers before you were looking for seven people and two had been rescued? And now you're looking for six people, but one has been rescued, so three people has been rescued in total, or only two? Total of eight. Me. Total of eight. <coughs> one rescued in the hospital. One uh, not in the hospital, but is, uh, we've communicated with that person. And then six that we are searching for. And all construction workers working on the potholes? Were the, all eight of them? The, um, yes, they were all related to the construction. Right. So yes. we, we heard that multiple vehicles went into the water. All right, we're going to break away from ABC's uh, special report on the bridge collapse there in Baltimore, Maryland. We've been listening to a number of state and federal officials try to get us up to speed on what is still very much an ongoing situation. And yes, uh, earlier today, uh, they said it and FBI just confirmed that they say at this time, it does not look like the collapse was tied to terrorism. Uh, they also said at this time, there are six people unaccounted for. That's right. We know of one, uh, two rescues, one hospitalized for sure. 
Uh, we also know that uh, the DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says no indications the container ship collision was, as you said, an, a, an intentional act. So we're hearing that now from multiple sources. Yes. Also, uh, we had a spokesperson with the Coast Guard who said they are actively uh, searching that search and rescue operations continue at this time. The container ship was called the Dolly. It had just left the port of Baltimore and was en route to Colombo in Sri Lanka and was not being piloted by its own crew, but local pilots who are used specifically to avoid accidents like this one. Uh, that may sound unusual, but it's actually routine at ports around the world. And that person that we told you, one of them uh, that was pulled from the water is being evaluated at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Uh, we were talking earlier that experts say that the water temperatures could be dangerous for people uh, still in the river because water temperatures are between 46 to 48 degrees in Fahrenheit, which is very dangerous for people who are submerged in it. So Baltimore is about as far away as San Antonio is to Austin. So a number of federal resources were probably closer than you might expect and able to get on scene quicker. So again, this is very much a search and rescue operation underway as we speak. Uh, we're continuing to monitor information as it comes in, but it's hard to uh, update any further than that, which is this is still very much a developing story. Yes, it is. And in fact, some reporters were acting or were asking when things would, you know, I, I would say be active again. And right now their focus is just search and rescue. The other thing you may have heard helicopters overhead. Uh, the FAA has actually put a temporary uh, flight restriction in place over the Key Bridge area right now as they again focus on first responders and assets being there to assist with the search and rescue. And then we'll keep you updated on our later newscast also on our website at kset.com. Let's go outside with live cam back here in San Antonio. Things much calmer, blue skies at about 52. Here's Justin. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a chilly morning. We have uh, clear skies. We dropped down into the 50s and 40s, even some 30s out there in the Hill Country this morning. Uh, it will warm up this afternoon, but you may need a light jacket right now. I want to start with the pollen count. A lot of people have been asking where we stand with oak today. It did come back up. Uh, our second highest count so far this season, 6,230. So that's the big troublemaker today. Molds, hackberry, and mulberry are all low. And as we go back outside for you, uh, temperatures 52 at the airport. It's in the 40s in Pernian and Kerrville. I mean, this is chilly weather for uh, March. Northerly winds 12 miles per hour at the airport right now. And that makes it feel just a little cooler out there. Noontime, 63. Make our way up to 73 this afternoon with sunny to mostly sunny skies. So it turns into a really, really nice day. Uh, there are some chances of rain headed our way tomorrow. We'll talk about when and where we might see that coming up here in just a few minutes, but some issues out on the roadways at this hour. What's the latest, RJ? Yeah, Justin, especially around the San Antonio International Airport, looking at Loop 410 westbound at Broadway Street. Right now we have a crash that uh, is involving a couple of vehicles here, and you do see some closures here, especially on the left-handed lane for all of our drivers that are headed westbound right now. At, right now at Broadway, the San Antonio Airport, a little bit further in that direction. So let's take a quick look at our maps and see what we're seeing in this area right now. We have traffic building up all the way to Nacogdoches Drive. So again, Loop 410 in westbound. There was a crash reported there. Also some debris reported around 281 and Loop 410. So a lot of activity around the airport right now if you're about to head out in that direction. Let's take you to the uh, near west side right now because this crash just popped up on Transguide and TxDOT is indicating that this is at 90 eastbound at General McMullen. We have traffic backed up all the way to Southwest 36th Street in this area. So again, a crash being reported US 90 eastbound at General McMullen. Want to let you know about some construction that's going to be taking place here during the day because we are now expanding all the work taking place on the NEX project. That's the Northeast expansion. And what we're looking at here is that both the north and southbound lanes, the left lanes will be closed from Walsham to Wiener Road uh, throughout the day today. So if you're about to head out to the northeast side and you run into this construction, keep this in mind. They're doing some uh, what they call illumination work, which is basically some extra lighting there to the highway. And again, this is all part of the NEX expansion in this area. But Either way, expected construction here till 3 o'clock this afternoon, north and southbound on the left lanes from Walsham to Wiener Road. As we give you one more quick look, Loop 410 westbound at Broadway. And uh, yeah, you do see some significant backup in that area. Okay, we're going to go to break now. We will be right back with more news and weather. A major bridge collapse in Baltimore. The Francis Scott Key Bridge was apparently hit by a container ship. The video shows the massive steel structure and multiple vehicles falling into the river. Multiple people also fell into the water. We're told overnight work was being done on the bridge at the time of the collision. Maryland authorities have all lanes of traffic closed in both directions. 
Today, the Supreme Court is hearing arguments in a case that could affect the most common type of abortions in the U.S. It is likely the most important abortion case since the justices overturned Roe v. Wade. The plaintiffs argue the FDA broke the law by letting patients get mefepristone through the telehealth and the mail. Some drug makers say they worry the case could set a precedent for more legal challenges to FDA approvals. Former President Donald Trump was given more time to post a massive bond while he appeals the ruling in a New York civil fraud trial. The appeals court gave him 10 more days to come up with the money and cut the amount to $175 million. Meanwhile, in a separate criminal case, a judge dismissed Trump's motion to delay the trial further. Jury selection in the hush money case involving Stormy Daniels is now expected to start April 15th. Sales of new homes slowed down a bit last month. The Commerce Department says sales on newly built homes dropped 0.3%. The median price for a new house also pulled back to its lowest level in more than two and a half years. Major changes at Boeing. The CEO, David Calhoun, announced he'll step down at the end of the year. The head of Boeing Commercial Planes Unit is out immediately, and the chairman of the board announced he won't run for re-election. Boeing has been under pressure since a door panel on a relatively new jet blew out mid-flight earlier this year. Nissan is looking to put a lot of new cars on the road. The car maker now says it wants to launch 30 new models over the next three years. More than half of them will be all electric vehicles or plug-in hybrids. It is also boosting its sales goal by a million vehicles. A dollar won't go quite as far at Dollar Tree. The company now says it will increase its maximum price at stores to seven bucks this year. A $5 cap was put in place just last summer. This comes after the company announced it would close hundreds of stores over the coming years. The Powerball jackpot continues to grow. There was no grand prize winner in last night's drawing. The jackpot is now around $865 million. Your next chance to win Powerball is tomorrow night. Meanwhile, the even bigger Mega Millions jackpot drawing is tonight. That jackpot is at $1.1 billion. Jeremy Sohan and Devin Vassell led the Spurs to victory last night against the Suns. Sohan hit a key three-pointer in the final minutes as the Spurs beat the Suns 104-102. Sohan finished with 26 points and a career-high 18 rebounds. Vassell finished with 26 points. The team got the win without superstar Victor Wimbenyama, who was sidelined due to an ankle injury he suffered in Saturday's game against the Suns. And that's today's 9 at 9. Well, the big question is, did you see it last night? A lot of people sending in pictures of this in the night sky. What were you looking at? Well, that was SpaceX Falcon 9. It, uh, it, it took off from Cape Canaveral, uh, was in low, or, uh, low Earth orbit, and came back around through Texas. And I'm not sure if it's uh, releasing... Uh, you know, the Starlink satellites, which is what they're carrying in the space, what you're seeing here, but it, it kind of gives like a jellyfish kind of look. And we had a lot of people asking uh, what this was, and that, that, uh, that's what it was. It, it was kind of weird looking. There's no doubt about it uh, if you've seen the video, but we have an article about it on ksat.com explaining uh, the situation if you want to check it out. Uh, but thank you so much for all the pictures and submissions. Uh, you can check those out too on our uh, KSAT Connect. Let's look at the time lapse here. Uh, we started off with a few clouds this morning, but now we've got clear skies. It's been a beautiful morning. Uh, a little chilly, yes, but uh, for March, this is great. Uh, we've got temperatures in the 50s still. Look at the lows. So we only got down to 51 here in San Antonio, but outlying areas around San Antonio, there were some 40s. 49 at Randolph, 49 New Braunfels, or 48 New Braunfels, excuse me, 49 in Seguin. And then even some 30s in the hill country this morning got down to 39 in Fredericksburg. Uh, we had dry air, a little bit of a frontal battery in place that uh, brought in some uh, cooler air. And so uh, that's why we started off as chilly as we did. 73, though, is the forecast high. 71 in New Braunfels, 75 in Somerset. It's, uh, it's going to be a great day. Uh, we're going to have less wind. Yesterday it was, it was windy. Uh, we're losing that as well today, too. So this is uh, picture perfect. 52 at the airport. Dew point is low, 37. And we still have a northerly wind at 12, but as I said, not as strong as it was yesterday. So what's ahead? Well, uh, I think we'll get uh, clear skies for most of today, but we're going to fast forward to tomorrow. I'm going to go to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. 
Now, this looks a little more ominous than it is, but it does show some showers coming through tomorrow morning. A little piece of energy there, and I think we could get a little bit of rain, but even into the afternoon, uh, there's a chance where we could see a couple of showers or storms pop up, uh, depending on kind of where the dry line sets up. Uh, and yes, we still do have a little bit of energy working through. So we're going to keep in some rain chances tomorrow. It's not going to be rainy all day. We're not going to get a lot of rain out of this because the air is still kind of dry. Uh, but something to watch tomorrow. Uh, and the Storm Prediction Center is watching for a few storms, but this is going to be mainly Austin up to Fort Worth. So we're not included with that. Not to say we couldn't see a little bit of lightning and thunder during the afternoon, uh, but I don't think we're going to be looking at a lot of severe weather. There, From there, uh, yes, it's dry today and fairly dry tomorrow. Dew points just shoot up. So by the weekend, the Easter weekend, we're going to see a lot more humidity. You'll uh, notice that, especially Saturday and then going into Easter Sunday. Hopefully that leads to a little bit of rain uh, by early next week. So here's the extended forecast. 74 tomorrow, there is a 20% chance of rain. 80 on Good Friday, 82 Saturday, 83 Easter Sunday. And we added another rain chance on Monday with a high of 85. We'll be right back. It is a historic building and it's a beacon in this community. A historic San Antonio school building is turning 100 years old and alumni are celebrating by remembering special stories. Our Tiffany Huerta takes us to Mark Twain Dual Language Academy with a look back at the evolving campus and what it means to those who work there. I have my t-shirt from when I was in basketball. You know, here it is when I came here to Twain. Diane Martinez can't help but smile when she thinks about her middle school days at Mark Twain. It means a lot to me because I played basketball all three years and I played volleyball too and I ran track. Martinez now works at the school as a health assistant and found some items to bring for the school's big celebration next month. The school building turns 100 years old. And this is the original part. This is the original front, front entrance. The school has changed a lot. Today, it's called Mark Twain Dual Language Academy, serving pre-K through 8th grade students. They currently have over 680 students. And next year, we anticipate we will be above 750. So to accommodate all of that, um, our pre-K students are going to be joining us. It is what is currently Gonzalez Early Childhood will become Mark Twain Dual Language Pre-K Academy. And so then this building here will host kinder through 8th grade. All classes are dual language. It's something teacher Nelia Gomez says helps students in different ways. Kids have the opportunity to get to know not just the language, other cultures. They become biliterate, biliteracy, and like bicultural. And they have, a, at the end of the day, they're going to have an extra opportunity to get more doors open to for their future. The Academy is asking the community to bring any memorabilia they find at their home to include in their celebration, like yearbooks and anything sports related. Anything and everything. We're in band, soccer, you know, we have we had uniforms. Martinez is excited to celebrate with the community. She even found a news clip where she came out with her classmates. We're in the front of Twain, where it used to be on Mulberry in San Pedro, and it was a winter day. It was a winter morning, and we're all huddling because it was so cold that morning. The Academy will host a celebration on April 30th. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Well, traffic is not very pretty right now out near San Antonio International Airport right now. You're looking at a huge backup. Those are the westbound lanes and it's stacking back quite a ways. Our RJ tells us there are two incidents, two separate incidents. One is at uh, 410 and Broadway and then another one at 410 and Jones Maltzberger. So quite the backup, not affecting the eastbound lanes at all. Yeah, RJ said the, the accident at Broadway seemed to have cleared up. So this backup that you see on this camera is from the accident there at Jones Maltzberger. Yes, ma'am. And right, there's another view of that backup kind of looking underneath the uh, flyover ramps there at 281 and 410. Again, uh, this is uh, 281 heading towards San Pedro, North Star Mall and heading off of points west. Well, the other big story today is obviously the container ship that has collapsed part of the Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland. This is a story we've been tracking since early this morning on GMSA. That's right. So this is a live look from out there in Maryland and six people remain unaccounted for at this time. But the search continues at the site of the bridge collapse. Officials updated us uh, earlier in this hour. Two people have been rescued, including one 
who was reportedly hospitalized. We also learned uh, in that press conference that there were workers, contractors on the bridge at the time of the collapse, an unknown number, but they were apparently repairing potholes at the time of this incident, which happened right around 1230 San Antonio time this morning. There was also a spokesperson with the FBI there at the press conference, and they reported that there is nothing to suggest ties to terrorism. So this happened in the middle of the night. Uh, this would have been a far different story if it happened during the morning or the evening commute. The governor of Maryland was telling us during the press conference that roughly 30,000 people use this bridge every single day there in southeast Baltimore. But this will remain one of our top stories. Look for updates in our later newscasts and online at ksat.com. Here at home, let's look out there with a live cam. Uh, it's good to see the sunshine out there, but still about 53 degrees out there. Still a little cool. We'll see these temperatures really start to turn a corner here soon, and it's not going to be a big warm up today. I mean, we'll make it into the 70s. That's what we're projecting. One of the reasons we have some slightly cooler air frontal boundary. It's a weak one, but it's kind of worked into our area and it's brought temperatures down in spots. Uh, this is the forecast today, the forecast highs. And you can see across parts of North Texas only expected to get into the upper 50s in places like Dallas, a high of only 59 today, 51 in Amarillo. So the front is making a little bit of a difference there. Uh, you get into deep South Texas and Brownsville and Laredo will be up near 80 will be somewhere in the middle there as that front kind of hovers near us. But 73 is uh, what we're forecasting at the moment. And right now we're sitting at 40, uh, 52, although there are some 40s out there. Bernie and Kerrville both reporting 46 with a northerly wind. That means there's a wind chill. It feels like it's in the low 40s in those spots. Uh, definitely jacket weather uh, for now, uh, but you can probably lose it this afternoon. 63 noon time. Uh, again, we're up to 73 today. Lots of blue skies, lots of sun. And uh, we'll continue to see some pretty nice weather this week, other than maybe a few rain showers tomorrow. We're going to take another look at that forecast for you uh, and talk a little bit about the eclipse, too, coming up here in just a couple minutes. Speaking of, uh, we are getting ready for the total solar eclipse by doing a few eclipse glasses giveaways. Tomorrow is our first one. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey and Mia Montgomery will be out at Yanaguana Garden at Hemisphere. And we expect a little bit of a crowd, so you can start lining up at 4 p.m. And those glasses will be handed out at 6.30. There will only be 300 glasses to hand out, so make sure you get there early. Now, if you miss out tomorrow, don't worry. We're going to have a few more of these events coming up. So you can find all of this information on the giveaway at our website, ksat.com. Yay, the Spurs bounced back in a big way and beat the Suns at home. And they did it without Wemby. David and RJ are back to break down another win for our San Antonio Spurs. Stephanie and her enthusiasm. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Well, we got over 15 wins, yeah, right? Yeah, I told you. That's <laughs> mission accomplished. Yay. Jesse wow. says. Yeah, big. You miss it, David. The other day, Justin was like, yeah, it'd be fun. The race for Daisy Sace. Yes. And we got the there. The race for 16 <laughs> wins. Got uh, we got it. And that was a good one here. I, I got to yeah. give full credit to the guys. They came out and they competed for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. apparently they ought to be playing the Suns a little more often because <laughs> out of four games, they won three. Remember the early yeah. in the season, they won yeah. the back-to-back -back in Phoenix? And we all thought, oh, here we go. This is going to be a great season. And then it kind of went <laughs> down here from there. But yeah. they played them twice over the last four or five. What is it about playing Phoenix like all the like, you know, you got to play them like two or three nights in a row and then you're done with them for a while? Yeah, some definitely some weird uh, so, scheduling really quirks good. there. But uh, you mentioned it, David. Saturday's game, Spurs get blown out, lose this game Ooh, by 25 lovely. points. No Victor Wambanyama last night. So you're going to need a couple of the other guys to really step up. And you see right there that combo. Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan both had some pretty big games. Devin Vassell had 25, and mm -hmm. Jeremy Sohead had 26, and Jeremy Sohead had the big winner down the stretch. And it looked like at the end you're going, well, I've seen this picture before. I've watched this movie. It happens all the time. And, but the Spurs were able to pull this thing off and, uh, and hang in there. And, the, you know, it was, the, it was the Suns who actually made some mistakes down the stretch, taking some bad shots. Yeah, and, and I think uh, we're, wow, we're going to get to that before. Jeremy Sohan game winner here yeah, in, uh, in just up. a bit, show you kind of that final sequence. But uh, actually, this is it right here. So Spurs were down by one. Wide open. Boom. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good stuff there from Jeremy. You see Victor uh, celebrating there, doing his uh, HEB shot. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Lizzie. the king of the world. <laughs> so the thing is, here, here's, what, here's what's interesting. Yeah, yeah. see, so he carry a, uh, a few bags. Um, here's the thing. 
Phoenix was in the sixth playoff spot mm -hmm. and then dropped to the eighth playoff spot. So they went from not having to play in the play-in tournament mm -hmm. to having to play in the play-in tournament. So they were a little pretty upset last night after the game that they let the Spurs beat him without Wimbanyama. So, you know, that's kind yeah, of embarrassing. They, uh, this was a big loss here. You see Kevin yeah. Durant miss a final shot there, and then they kicked it out. Devin Booker ends up taking the last shot here, also rims out. So really some solid defense there from the Spurs there uh, as well to wrap up uh, win number 16. But, uh, David, you know, this is what has been so frustrating for me to watch is that a guy like Jeremy Sohan, 26 points, career high, 18 rebounds. Uh, this is the type of stuff I thought we were going to see from Jeremy all season. And that's why I think early on when we did the whole point guard experiment with him, I think that kind of set him back to start the year. And hopefully we see Jeremy kind of finish off the year pretty strong here. Yeah. And the other interesting thing is the Spurs to have 16 wins. They are still in the bottom three, which means they still can get the top pick in the draft, although there's no Wimbanyama in this draft. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they may not have to have the top three, but they're only a game ahead or behind, however you want to look at it. Charlotte's got 17 wins. Yeah. So the Spurs are kind of, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't know if it's worth getting in the top three this year or not. I'm just, how well, many players it's definitely, are out there? Yeah, definitely not a, a yeah. class that we saw last year, not only with Wemby, but also uh, Brandon Miller, who went number two to the uh, – Charlotte Hornets. But again, I, I think right now it's about just kind of finishing the season off strong. We'll see how Wemby's uh, ankle kind of looks here. So what you was your, I mean, <laughs> he jumped off the bench on that three. It looked yeah. pretty good. Look, so, I, I, I keep on saying that. I mean, I think we may see some game management here with Wemby, of course. Game He's going to take part in the Olympics as well. I think that's going to be a big focus for Victor as he moves on. You know, he wanted to play last year in the World Championships for France, uh, was not able to do it because he wanted to focus on the season. So I think once we get Victor to about 68 games played, then, uh, you know, we may see a couple of other. Uh, well, now I got 10 left. So, but I, I love 10 left. So, yeah, let's do. That's yeah, my favorite phrase, game management. In other words, you ain't playing. You're going to sit regardless of whether you're hurt or yeah. not. It's called game management. Here's the deal, though. Okay, so okay, he has does. to hit 65 games played uh -huh. in order to be considered for the all-NBA defensive teams and for potentially the defensive player of the year. So he's got to play three more games. He's got to play three more games. And the rookie of the year, though, he's already good there. They don't need a 65-game limit for rookie of the year. So he should be good to go there. Good to so know. Is, yeah. just is know. three more games he's got to play? Right? Three more games for all defensive wow. honors. That's yeah, basically so. the way the NBA set up this year so that they, we wouldn't see game management uh, to end the season. <laughs> well, he better get to play those last three games because yeah. he deserves so. it. I think he will. He Especially okay. for the second half of the fun. season, the way he's played. You Blocking everybody's he shot. Jumped up. Hitting threes. <laughs> and he jumped up. He's fine. Yep. Just like that. Dude. Just like that. <laughs> uh, who we got? We got Utah next, right? Yep. Yeah. Utah yeah. coming up. I think, yeah. I could only get like bags can four you? bags of HEB on, <laughs> on my arms. And I'm yeah. curbside over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. David RJ, 939, 53 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. It was a night of premieres at the movies, and what made it unique was all of the work was created by local high schoolers. Well, the 8th Annual Bear Fest is happening next week, but before the films, photos, music, and graphic designs are displayed to the public, local high schoolers and nonprofits got to see the work months in the making. KSAT photojournalist William Caldera and digital journalist Andrew Wilson give us a look at this unique event. We want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Our tickets? Perfect. What school are you in? Reagan. Reagan High School, I went there. All the schools that have participated in Bear Fest and Film for Nonprofits are here at Santiago's Palladium to see the screening of all the projects we have made. We're looking at all of the films, all of the portfolios and everything that all of the different teams submitted. Bear Fest was a really unique idea. There's nothing like it. And it is a way to pair our high schools with our nonprofits in the community. What do we got? What schools have we got here? So hi, we're from Reagan High School, and the nonprofit that we filmed is Alamo City Pitbull. So they get to go and work with these nonprofits. They're learning community service. They're learning how to project manage. They're work, learning uh, multimedia skills in, in the process, and then they're actually putting a project together that they can use in their portfolio. 
we started out by getting matched with the organization and then we went to a couple events, talked with the people, figured out what their vision for this was and then we filmed it, we edited it. We had worked on this for so long and we had really wanted to make this impact and it felt really nice to see it on the big screen like where you usually see all, all these big movies like we got to see our project and then people clapping for it, it felt really nice. That was kind of surreal, it was, it was really cool seeing something I had worked on just on a little uh, computer screen on the exact same screen I saw Dune on a week ago. Bravo. So if you want to see all of the team's hard work, you can attend the free award ceremony at the Tobin Center on Monday. That's happening at 7 p.m. Just go to TobinCenter.org to get your ticket. Well, as Justin was telling us yesterday, it's still too far out to reasonably mm -hmm. ascertain what the weather, the forecast will be like for the total solar eclipse. It's yeah. true. I can sit here and give you a forecast, but it would probably be wrong. Uh, because <laughs> wait, wait, go is. back and say that again. <laughs> it sounds funny. <laughs> Don't just take that last clip and use yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Two, it's because it's yeah. two weeks out. Right. Uh, or nearly two weeks out. So Got anyway, it. what we did go back and do is look at the climatology for April 8th, which, okay. you know, it gives us... A, a little bit of insight, sure. not a lot, but a little bit of insight. So let's look. So over the last eight years, uh, I'm sorry, 10 years uh, on April 8th, this is what the cloud cover has looked like. Uh, we had a lot of clouds, say, last year, but two years ago it was sunny. Uh, I think by and large what this kind of tells us is that this time of year we can get just about anything. Uh, but the amount of sky covered by clouds, on average, 40%. If we're lucky, we'll get a day like we got in 2022, where uh, it is clear and uh, we can see the eclipse beautifully. Uh, yes, clouds would inhibit our viewing a little bit, but look, it's still going to be cool. It's still going to be awesome, uh, regardless of cloud cover, but it is something that's pretty important here to uh, how we see it. So we're going to keep you posted. Yes, it's still too early uh, to get you a good, reliable forecast, but we certainly are looking at it. Uh, very closely, and we'll continue to keep you updated. 52 right now. Dew point is at 37. Northerly winds at about 12 miles per hour. And uh, some places with that northerly wind, it is feeling pretty chilly out there. Here's what I'll tell you. We'll get another chilly morning tomorrow and uh, uh, going into Thursday. But it builds up. It builds up, and we'll see uh, some warmer temperatures as we head towards the weekend as we get more humidity in place. So the dew point trend showing you that, yes, the dew point's start to climb and it's just dry air that gives us these cool mornings but once we get dew points back in the 60s by saturday and sunday then the mornings really start to become more muggy and warm and we'll get more clouds and maybe some rain chances coming back into play and even with the dry air tomorrow we actually do have a rain chance to talk about the reason for that we've got our big upper level low that's moving east that's taking rain and snow with it but there's another little piece of energy back here that swings through texas uh, we'll have a dry line in play tomorrow, so there's an outside chance we could see a shower or two. I think with the air being as dry as it is, uh, we're not going to see a ton, uh, but this particular model does show a few showers, especially tomorrow morning. Those would push east by midday, and then by the afternoon, maybe a couple of more isolated showers or storms popping up. Rain chances, I think, are really pretty low, 20% all day long. Uh, but uh, if there's a shower or two, don't be surprised. And then uh, by the afternoon, especially to the north, we could see a couple thunderstorms. What about Easter weekend? Saturday, more humidity, 82. Sunday, mostly cloudy, 83. It'll be good for whatever plans you have. Just know it'll be a little humid uh, from time to time, and we'll certainly have more clouds. Uh, extended forecast, 20% chance tomorrow, 74, 79 Thursday, 80 on Good Friday. So it'll be a warm day. Uh, and then the weekend, we just showed you that. And then next week, it gets a little more active, 85, 20% chance of rain. And, uh, of course, that is a week from the eclipse there. So we're, we're getting closer a week from next Monday. We're right. getting closer, and uh, we are going to, you know, really look at the forecast yes. hour by hour. Uh, and it's not really going to be till a day or two before that we can say unequivocally, this is what the cloud cover is going to look like. All right, as we get closer, very close, we are yep. allowed to ask. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes you okay are. Then. <laughs> yes, uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll get plenty of inquiries about I what know. it will look at, but uh, what it will look like. But we're, yeah. we're, uh, we're optimistic. Okay. That sounds yeah. good. We'll Thank take you, it. Justin. Before yes. we go to break, uh, SAPD just let us know there's going to be a test detonation for the Bob Squad between 10 and 11 over off of Southeast Loop 410. They say you may hear it or feel it. 
All right, just be aware of that. Let's look out there with Zoo Cam. This morning, we are looking at our friends, the flamingos, enjoying the sunshine and frolicking in the water. It's a great day to go to the zoo. Tomorrow at GMSA at 9, it's another edition of Science with Sarah. Sarah Spivey and David Sears will be out at Helotus Elementary doing some dry ice experiments with the help of some fifth graders. So tune in for that tomorrow on GMSA at 9. And there's an iconic cherry blossom tree in Washington, D.C. that has skyrocketed to fame online. However, now the scraggly tree's days are numbered. ABC's Danny New tells us why and introduces all of us to Stumpy. I don't care. We'll decorate it and it'll be just right for our play. The Charlie Brown Christmas tree may be forever. But sadly, this will be the last bloom of a beloved cherry blossom named Stumpy, often referred to as the Charlie Brown Christmas tree of D.C. Stumpy may be the smallest and most hollow of the National Mall's 3,700 cherry trees, but folks have been lining up to get one final snap with this local celebrity tree. Even the Washington Nationals' presidential mascots made sure to pay their respects, with the caption reading, just a few icons, farewell, Stumpy. Now, the reason Stumpy will be leaving us probably won't surprise you, climate change. Stumpy resides on the southern shores of the Tidal Basin, which is some seawalls built in the late 1800s, not prepared for today's rising water levels. That additional six feet of water overflows the banks of the Tidal Basin twice a day, every day during high tide. So starting later this spring, the National Park Service will embark on a $113 million renovation project on the walls of the Tidal Basin and the Potomac River, resulting in the removal of about 150 trees, such as our dear Stumpty Dumpty. As Stumpy reached his final bloom this past week, the National Symphony Orchestra sent a trumpeter to serenade Stumpy. Everyone's favorite local celebrity, Stumpy. The Lego Discovery Center in Virginia built a tribute, which is probably the only cherry tree that's smaller than Stumpy. And as you may have noticed earlier, there's even an upcoming 5K that features a Stumpy mascot. Oh, nice. Oh, I like it. And while Stumpy will soon be removed, his clippings will actually be sent off to have genetic matches created. Then, little Stumpy clones will be planted all over the surrounding parks, ensuring his small but mighty presence is still felt every spring, kinda. I don't think it'll be the same, so I wanted to make sure that we got a picture in with the original Stumpy. By the way, I'm a little worried that the Washington Nationals brought President George Washington, famed assailant of cherry trees, anywhere near my beloved Stumpy. Don't you lay a finger on him, Mr. President. He has two more months to live, and I still need time to go down there and get my selfie, okay? In New York, for ABC News, I'm Danny New. Construction is slowing traffic northbound 281 at St. Mary's. Two accidents on 410 West, not too far from North Star Mall, and an accident right now on 35 near Cesar Chavez in the northbound lanes. Justin. Clear skies. Temperatures will be on their way up. We're in the 50s now, but 70s this afternoon. Uh, we do have a small chance for some showers and maybe a thunderstorm tomorrow. Otherwise, it warms up and it gets more humid as we head towards Easter weekend. 82 on Saturday, 83 for Easter Sunday. Not too bad, though, overall. Not bad. Uh, yeah, a little warmer, a little more spring light, but this morning, a little chilly. All right, we'll get a little bit of everything. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day.